This episode is brought to you by CuriosityStream, home to thousands of nonfiction documentaries from some of the best filmmakers in the world. Follow the link below to start your free trial today. Fifty years ago saw the end of the project that gave us one of mankind's greatest achievements. The Apollo program had taken us from a small, earthbound species to one that could walk on the face of the moon. It was a monumental achievement, and people began to speculate about the countless other goals we could accomplish in the following decades. Little did they know that we wouldn't set foot on the moon or any other celestial body for half a century or more. As of early 2020, the world space agencies haven't launched any missions that have resulted in humans landing on the moon, even though we've had the technology for over five decades. There's been a lot of talk about manned missions to Mars in recent years, but we're probably still several years away from even considering such a project, let alone trying to construct a self-sustaining Martian colony. But if NASA has any say in the matter, we'll only have to wait four more years until the space program launches its most ambitious project ever. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the upcoming Artemis program, and consider what exactly it would take for NASA to pull off their plan for a permanent lunar base. Back in May of 2019, NASA announced their bold new project, fittingly named Artemis, a nod to the Apollo program. This new endeavor aims to land more humans on the moon by 2024, including the first woman. Whereas the Apollo missions aim to land astronauts on the moon for relatively brief periods of time, Artemis missions will be much more elaborate. NASA hopes to station astronauts on the moon for up to weeks at a time, studying the lunar surface and setting up equipment that can be used for future missions, with an end goal of eventually turning the moon into a staging area for missions to Mars and beyond. Speaking of Mars, NASA considers their Artemis missions useful practice for future manned missions to the Red Planet. After all, it's much easier to get to the moon than to Mars, taking only three days instead of multiple months. If they can prove that manned, longer-term trips to the moon are feasible and can be done safely and reliably, that would be a big step towards getting the go-ahead for a manned trip to Mars. Of course, doing anything in space is very expensive, and when you throw human lives into the mix, it becomes even more so. The estimated budget for the first stage of the Artemis program, spanning the years 2020 through 2024, is about $35 billion. That's a lot of money, but if you've watched my video about what NASA could do with the US military budget, you'll realize that it's a drop in the bucket compared to what we spend on weapons of war every single year. For example, consider the failed F-35 fighter jet. Originally billed as a one-size-fits-all, super-versatile military masterpiece, the F-35 program is now a decade behind schedule, the machine fails to deliver on any of its promises, and the entire program has cost one and a half trillion dollars for a plane that doesn't work. But that's not terribly surprising. The US loves to spend absurd amounts of money on the military. The entire Artemis program will cost just 4% of the annual military budget. When you look at it that way, it's pretty remarkable what NASA hopes to accomplish on a comparatively tiny budget. Now, the Artemis program hasn't been without its own challenges. A critical component for the missions is the Space Launch System, or SLS, which includes an absolutely massive rocket to help carry astronauts and equipment to the moon. The first of these rockets was supposed to launch back in 2017. Three years later, NASA expects it will still take another year to get them off the ground. Running behind schedule isn't uncommon for space programs, but it is expensive. They're currently burning tens of millions of dollars just trying to catch up. Once they finally do get a working rocket, there's another problem. The SLS rocket is single use. Unlike some other large rockets like the Falcon Heavy, each SLS rocket will be scrapped after one launch. Unfortunately, the solution isn't as simple as switching to the Falcon Heavy. The SLS is still much larger than anything SpaceX currently offers. It should be able to carry more than twice the payload of a Falcon Heavy. And all of that size and power is needed to ferry all the mission-critical materials and astronauts to the moon. Hopefully NASA can figure out a way to make the SLS reusable. But for now, that's another big expense and time sink for the program. But let's set all of that aside for now. The really exciting part is what NASA has planned for the next phase of Artemis. Beginning in 2022, NASA will start building what they call the Gateway, a sort of spaceport for astronauts going to and from the moon, housing a resupply station, an orbital laboratory, living quarters, and other useful bits and pieces for launching missions deeper into space. When astronauts make future trips to the moon, their module will first dock at the Gateway, where they can get any supplies they need before proceeding to land on the moon. These first, temporary trips to the moon are just the first steps towards the ultimate goal. After a few years of preliminary missions, setting up equipment and making sure everything is going according to plan, NASA wants to establish a permanent lunar colony around 2028. As of right now, our space missions are limited by how much fuel our rockets can carry from Earth. This means our reach beyond Earth is limited. But what if we could create fuel far from Earth, say, on the Moon? One of NASA's primary goals is to set up a water mining operation on the Moon. The water molecules can be separated into hydrogen and oxygen, both critical components of rocket fuel. 
If we could get a functional refueling station established on the moon, we could extend our reach farther than ever before, launching missions to Mars and well beyond. With the Gateway and a lunar colony established, we could send astronauts to live and work on the moon for months at a time, or maybe even longer. This would give us valuable information about how the human body responds to life in deep space. Of course, the United States isn't the only country eyeing the moon as a pit stop for future missions. While international space law is very outdated, there are some regulations regarding the claiming of territory on celestial bodies and the ownership of space resources. If we're lucky, working side by side in outer space could foster a renewed sense of camaraderie and fellowship with all humans, regardless of nationality. And maybe we could see international cooperation as we forge a new path into the future and toward the stars. If you'd like to learn more about the future of moon missions, I highly recommend you check out Return to the Moon on CuriosityStream. It's an inspiring look at just how far we've come as a species, and what the future could hold for us beyond Earth. If you watch my videos, you'll know I'm a big fan of CuriosityStream. It's an online streaming service with thousands of nonfiction titles from some of the best filmmakers in the game. You can find tons of great episodes like Return to the Moon, and they've got a bunch of material on technology and outer space, which are some of my favorites. Their giant catalog includes content on science, nature, astronomy, technology, and lifestyle, among others. Unlimited access starts at just $2.99 a month, and as a special offer just for you guys, you can get a free trial by following the link below. CuriosityStream is available on just about every platform you can imagine, so wherever you are, you'll always have access to great, interesting content. As an added bonus, your CuriosityStream subscription now comes with a free Nebula subscription. Nebula is a new streaming platform built by and for creators like Wendover Productions, Real Engineering, Kurtzgesagt, and of course, Second Thought and many others. It's a place for us to try new things and make original content that just wouldn't be possible on YouTube. Give CuriosityStream a shot and get free access to Nebula when you visit curiositystream.com slash second thought. If you enjoyed this episode, consider dropping a like. If not, a thumbs down. While you're here, check out some of my other work. I have videos on all sorts of topics and I bet you'll find something you'll enjoy. Remember to subscribe if you'd like to see more episodes like this one, and click the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.